joining the army is not just a job but rather a way of life you are taken from civilian street and trained to operate in adios conditions within some of the most dangerous places on earth but no one stays in the army forever this is where the transition back to civilian can be tricky and to some people very challenging in this series i speak to men and women who's been there and done it i find out how they managed to successfully transition back to civilian life and what they would have done differently it is my hope that this video provides some valuable tips for serving personnel looking to successfully transition back into civilian life. This is their story. My name is Tony Wilshire. I'm the CEO and founder of the mental health awareness charity It's OK Not To Be OK. Hi, this is Tyson Fury, a.k.a. The Gypsy King. This is a special message to Tony Wilshire. You're doing a fantastic job, buddy. Keep doing the great stuff that you do. And it's OK not to be OK. I'm not OK. There's a lot of people in the world who's not OK. But people like you are making it a better place to be, making it easy to come out with everything. All the best. God bless you. Fantastic job. Hello Tony, it's Vinny here son, keep up the good work, it's okay not to be okay, you keep spreading the word son, I know you're saving many lives, we're all behind you son, and I hope you keep up the good work, fantastic mate, all behind you, good luck Tony, all the best son, Tony Wilshire, top man. Uh, former serving soldiers, uh, served for 17 years um, in the military, um, and mine and Mikey's path crossed uh, when he got in touch with me and asked me to do a presentation on his YouTube channel. And obviously we had common grounds because um, he's still a serving soldier in the engineers um, where I started off at. Yeah. Did you ever see yourself or did you always saw yourself as a soldier? Uh, yeah, um, I did, Mikey, to be quite honest, because... Um, when I first joined the military, um, it saved my life. I was in quite a bad place when I joined the military. I was a bit of a tear away. I was in gangs and I was um, getting up to all sorts of things uh, that I shouldn't be. And the only place for me was either prison or um, to be killed for the things that I was getting up to. So uh, the army for me was, um, it was really good. It was a great foundation for me. Um, it gave me camaraderie, it gave me fellowship, it gave me purpose. And if I'm honest, it saved my life. And um, I never ever see me doing anything outside of the army. Um, it, it, it became a part of me. It became, um, it became, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a massive, massive part of my life. Yeah. Um, so, I know, mm. You are fit and strong, and when you were in, you were really fit and strong. Yeah, but yeah. how was your selection? Commando selection, no, or like PT basic. course selection, or oh, basic training. Yeah, basic training. Um, so basic training was tough for me because um, the army had to get out of me all the horrible things that the, the world had put into me. So it needed to create discipline, it needed to, um, to create me to keep my mouth shut um, and that was quite painful at times um, but it made me the person that I am today, it really did. Um, it stripped me down to nothing um, physically and mentally um, but then it built me back up to um, a man that had integrity, uh, I had values, I had standards, I understood authority, um, not all the time, um, hence the uh, trouble I got in in my military career. But um, no, it was, it was a brilliant, brilliant time of my life. Yeah. Was, was there like, during basic training, was there something that you found difficult and was there something you found easy? Um, so initially, um, taking correction, and being told what to do because I'd, I'd never had that in my life so it was it was abnormal for me whereas um, having authority in your life and um, people uh, disciplining you and discipling you is actually a, a part of life it's actually a biblical principle um, and it's normal so um, that was that was quite tough for me and um, to keep my mouth shut and do as my told but um, um, I got it in the end uh, as, as we all do yeah. So PTI, Commando, yep. 
And which one again? Uh, so my military career, I, I, I started with the Royal Engineers. Yeah. Um, so I did um, 10 years down at the notorious 5-9 Commando Squadron, Independent Commando Squadron, which obviously then formed 5-9 uh, Commando Squadron, which then went on um, to be 2-4 Commando Regiment. Um, and I did uh, 10 years down there, so a, a boy um, into a man from sapper to corporal. Um, and then I was posted to Northern Ireland to do search and bomb disposal out in Northern Ireland. Um, that was that was tough for me as well because it was something new. Um, it was with new people, it was change, and not everyone um, adapts to change well, and I didn't, to be quite honest, and I found myself in... Uh, quite a lot of trouble um, out in Northern Ireland. So um, I, I wasn't out there very long and I came back to the UK um, to serve still in uh, search and bomb disposal. Um, and then it was then I was selected to serve with the Special Forces search team. And um, I sort of found myself again there, Mikey. I, um, I really started to enjoy my work. I started to enjoy the operational side of things. I started to enjoy the, the troop and the lads that I was in. Um, and I think I was probably much more suited in that environment. Mm. And um, then I had to make a life choice. It was um, my, my little baby Farron was born and it was either sort of be an operator and be on pager and be away on ops all the time um, or sort of be at home and be a dad. Um, so I really had to make a decision and I wanted to be a dad, Mikey, is the truth of it. Um, and I wanted to be um, a husband and a father. So. Um, I chose to re-roll, so um, I did my PTI course, um, and uh, very shortly after that, six months after that, I was invited back um, on uh, PT Corps, Royal Army Physical Training Corps selection, um, and passed that with flying colours, and then transferred into the Royal Army Physical Training Corps. Um, enjoyed that for a short time, and then got selected to um, be a re rehabilitation instructor, so sort of working with injured soldiers, um, physically and mentally, um, so I did that for a little while. So yeah, that's a little bit about my military career. From what you are saying, strong character, mm -hmm. and really physically strong, yeah. and mentally strong for all that the training you've gone through. Yeah. But if you don't mind sharing, mm. you had a bit of uh, difficulties with your mental well-being. Is it okay to talk about? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, um, I talk very openly about it at the um, "It's Okay Not to Be Okay" presentation. So no problem at all, Mikey. So yes, physically fit um, on the outside, mentally very strong, um, confident, uh, sort of a lively character. But the truth is, on the inside, I was broken. Mm. Um, I was dealing with um, some childhood trauma. I was dealing with um, stuff I'd done in my teenage years um, as a result of wanting to join the military. Um, and I was dealing with it uh, in all the wrong ways, with drink and violence. And um, my biggest problem, Mikey, was uh, accepting uh, that something was wrong um, and, most importantly, that, that I needed help. But no one knew what was really going on in my mind. Um, I was very um, broken, very lost. I had lots of unanswered questions. I had lots of trauma that I'd suppressed um, that um, I hadn't uh, dealt with because I didn't want to deal with it because it was painful um, and I had some really horrible memories. But no one really knew that was going on. Um, and I had a breakdown, Mikey, in uh, March 2019. Um, I had a mental breakdown. I'm completely out the blue for friends, family and, and military colleagues. Um, but it was only a matter of time. I was uh, like a ticking time bomb. I was like uh, a coiled spring. So, yeah, I had a breakdown um, in the military, Mikey. So, is, is that what led you to leave the army? Or were there other reasons? No. Um, at what point did you think that it was enough and you wanted to leave? No, so... Um, uh, my roles and responsibilities in the military at the time um, was a contributing um, factor to me having a breakdown, uh, but it wasn't uh, the main reason. It was just uh, something else. Um, so I had a year off, I recovered, I went through DCMH, um, I found my faith, got introduced to uh, Jesus Christ, gave my life to Jesus, um, got baptised, got filled with the Holy Spirit, um, got planted in the Christian Revival Church. 
And it was then really that I started to heal. I started to um, answer the questions. I started to deal with the trauma. I started to speak to people. I started to um, accept that I needed some help. Um, but I was still in the military um, at this point, so um, I'd found my faith and I had recovered physically, mentally and spiritually. Um, so it was now time to get my military career um, back going again. So that's what I did. I, I slowly but surely got back into um, a routine within the Royal Army Physical Training Corps. I was up at um, the Parachute Regiment. And again, I, I, I always envisaged um, doing my full 20 year service because it, uh, it was like a massive part of my life. I was 17 years into my military career um, by then. But I wasn't so happy um, at this stage. I wasn't really enjoying my job thoroughly. Um, I just started the, uh, the, uh, the It's OK Not To Be OK campaign, um, which was um, about to become a charity, something that I was very passionate about. Um, I had big dreams for it. And I was sort of five years away from the pension and the payout and the Rolex and the brass band that you don't get um, when you leave. And I thought, do I get out and do something that I enjoy, that I'm passionate about, or do I just sort of waste five years doing something that wasn't really making me happy, wasn't yeah, satisfying me? Yeah. Um, I would have got a pension out of it. Um, so in, in one column, there was security, there was pension, there was um, everything else that went with finishing my last five years. And in column B, it was get out and do something that I was passionate about. So I did, uh, Mikey, that's what I did. I decided to get out of the military um, in December last year uh, to no uh, real job, because uh, there's no money in charity. Um, was it, did it scare me a little bit? Do I regret it? No, not one bit. Um, people sometimes say to me, do I miss the military? Um, at times I do, yes, but at times, at other times I don't. And, and I think for me, when I left the military, and what people seem to think is um, everything hits you at once, but it doesn't. Um, sometimes it might be a week and you think, oh, I miss um, sports afternoon. and. Then a year goes past and you miss the Christmas function. You never really know what you miss until uh, it doesn't come round. Um, so, and I'm still missing things uh, now that I didn't think I would miss that, uh, that I am. So, yeah. yeah. So, when you were leaving, did you have any strategy? Were there any courses that you did or you just jumped out? No. Um, so, the military, uh, despite what you read in the papers and you hear... Um, people slandering in, in, in different sort of platforms. The military is brilliant. They did absolutely everything to help me transition um, into civilian life, um, from writing CVs to job applications to um, helping me get a GP, sort of the medical side of things, housing. Um, everything was on offer for me. Um, as it turned out, I had quite a lot of things put in place myself. So I didn't really need to um, use some of the services. But no, it was absolutely um, second to none. I had um, a sort of game plan, um, obviously, to get the charity as big as it could and save the world with it. Um, but like any game plans, they always change, Mikey, and it, and it still changes daily. And there was some times when I thought, God, Tom, what have you done here? Um, and yeah, maybe uh, um, wanted to sort of dip my toe back in it, but I've got, I've got no regrets at all. Um, I'm thoroughly in, uh, enjoying it. So before we we get into what you do now, mm -hmm. what would be your tip for someone like me still in it, looking, yep. you know, from the inside, looking outside, and yep. looking at my prospect? What yep. will be some of the tips? What will be your advice to me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so great question and the first thing I'd say is um, I think as people we always fear change um, and I would say to anyone listening don't fear change be excited about change um, change uh, will make you grow uh, change will make you stronger 
um, and change will really um, bring out the good characteristics in yourself. So don't be fearful. Um, the, uh, the British Army is brilliant at equipping you and supporting you. Even when I've left, I, um, old squadrons, um, even the military themselves are, are, are always on hand um, to help. So yeah, um, yeah, I'll just reiterate that. Um, be excited about change. Don't fear change, and get get yourself ready to leave. Don't leave things right to the last minute. Um, there's lots of courses. Um, have a have a game plan like what you've just spoke about, Mikey. Have a game plan. Think, okay, okay what am I going to do? And if that doesn't work, then change the game plan. Then go for something else and change it. Um, I would strongly recommend the reserves uh, to anyone that leaves, uh, just because of uh, the experience and the knowledge that you've got uh, to put into other people and the reserves have got a, a, a great um, platform and, and what they do to support the uh, main British army and to support the community. So um, if you do get out, um, yeah, sort of look into the reserves as well. Morning people, my name's Tony Wilshire from the Mental Health Awareness Charity. It's okay not to be okay. So today is a very special day for me and a very special day for the charity. So it's National Time to Talk Day. Now talking is the absolute foundations and DNA of the charity. So what are you into nowadays? So what, 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 what are you doing after the army? So um, I touched on it about my faith. Um, that was what saved my life. Jesus saved my life. The church saved my life. Uh, despite what you hear about um, religion um, and, and the dramas that it causes, and man-made religions do do that. Um, my Christian, Christian faith yeah. saved my life, and, and that was something that I would never turn my back on, so much so um, that I've now enrolled in full-time um, Bible study. So I, I go to uni on a Thursday and Friday uh, to learn um, Bible studies, which will in turn qualify me to be a, a pastor or a padre, yeah. um, depending on what sort of denomination uh, you, 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 your faith is. And um, I'm, I'm an apprentice preacher at the minute. I'm, I'm working alongside my um, church um, preacher um, and I'd like to do that one day I would like to tell people um, about the thing that saved my life and that was Jesus Christ Mikey um, and he is there for people um, and I think the world is so confused um, about God because of man-made um, doctrine um, that they're quite fearful of it well let me tell you something that God loves you um, and he did send his son Jesus Christ um, to me and he will to you uh, to help you in uh, your crisis so I'm very passionate about that so I work for the Christian Revival Church mm -hmm. um, full time I'm in full time ministry now and I'm the CEO of it's okay not, not to be to okay, be okay yeah. um, and, and the two really complement each other the charity is all about Helping people's mental health, saving lives, uh, building communities, um, getting people out of their darkness and their isolation and, and into light and into a much better place. Um, and very much so uh, my faith. That's what, uh, that's what the Church of Jesus Christ is about. It's about saving people. It's about bettering people. It's about, most importantly, it's about getting people to heaven. So, um, that, yeah, that's what I'm up to now, Mikey. I've, I've got my two little children yeah. back in my life after um, my radical turnaround and my mental health and addiction recovery. So um, I've got those in my life. I'm due to get married this summer um, to the beautiful worship leader in our church yep. and yeah we've got some really big plans um, for the charity so um, please support it and have a look what we're doing and get involved yep. and most importantly if you need the charity's help then please get involved thank you very much for no problem doing this with me no problem mikey um, i really appreciate that and just one last thing um support this man behind the camera um mikey aggie he's he's doing great things um helping um soldiers uh, and getting the message out there so please get behind his youtube channel and his podcasts and uh, really support him so mikey you're a good man and remember people it's okay not to be okay god bless <laughs> <laughs>